Hi, welcome to the Sun Country Golf House and Sun Country TV Studios International. Uh, we are here today to talk about uh, the Players Championship that's down at the end of the Mountain Gods. It's one of our newer events, a cooperative between uh, all the pros and the amateurs here in the Sun Country borders, a chance for us all to play together at the same time. So we're going to briefly, this is specifically for the players, we want to kind of go through the nuts and bolts of the event to give you an idea of what's going on. So first we'll talk about the schedule of events and then I'll throw it over to Matt to kind of talk about the actual plane and the course setup and whatnot. So what you can expect when you get down to Rio Doso and the end of the Mountain Gods, if for some reason you're not aware, uh, there is a rate for all the players there at the end. I believe it's about $109, so please call the inn and make sure that uh, you stay there at that property. It's kind of an all uh, one-stop shop for while you're in town. You really don't even need to, to leave the resort while you're there. It's a lot of fun. So, But once you get there, uh, Sunday's our first round of competitive play. Registration for the amateurs will be in the foyer right before you get into the golf shop where you can pick up your tea gift and uh, get set up for the day. And then it'll be a one o'clock shotgun for everybody. We'll pro probably call everybody to carts about 15 minutes till and go through some brief announcements uh, and then get you under underway. After that, we're, we're kind of making a plea for everybody to please attend the dinner. It'll be right there at the end at the barbecue place there at the, right at the base of the golf shop uh, immediately following play on Sunday. So if you would, please make a, a priority to come uh, have dinner with us that night and, and uh, a chance for you to interact with our sponsors and, and all the other players and, and have a good time. Uh, on Monday we'll have an 8 o'clock shotgun. It's a chance uh, to get everybody on the road. I know shotguns and competitive events like this aren't, aren't, are sometimes frowned upon, but it's a great way to get the day with over with early, avoid some possible weather issues that we may run into at some point, and get you on the road. We'll do uh, the award ceremony immediately following play as well. So that being said, what's kind of fun about this event is that this is the one time a year where the amateurs and pros really get to play together in one championship flight and duke it out. So let's focus on the amateurs first, kind of tell us uh, who we should look out for at the end. Well, the big name that's missing is our two-time defending champion, uh, Tim Madigan, who's playing phenomenal golf, uh, won't be at the championship this year. Uh, a, a big play, I mean, he just shot 12 under par down at the Butterfield Trail at the USAM qualifier, so he would have been a, a major obstacle uh, looking for his three-peat. But on the Amateur side, uh, I've got some guys that uh, may be a little unusual, some dark horses for this event, mostly because of what the In the Mountain Gods brings and the, the, the necessity for accuracy off the tee and patience with the golf course. I mean, there's some trees that are in the middle of fairways, um, and so it can be a frustrating place if you hit a little bit off the line. So, I'm looking at Alex Estrada, a, a player that's uh, really consistent, uh, had a good run at the New Mexico West Texas Amateur Championship, uh, but won the city championship here in Albuquerque this year. Um, Jason Myers, a name that not a lot of people know probably in the section, um, but Jason is a, our mid-amateur champion who won that event at Paco Ridge, which I see a lot of similarities between the two golf courses. High altitude, lots of trees, more of a kind of accuracy golf course than a bomber's ac uh, golf course. And, uh, and Patrick Hanlon, always a, a perennial contender for Amateur Association events, uh, will be contending for the title. I've got a unique dark horse for you, um, and this is uh, Simon Miller. Nice. Uh, Simon Miller uh, hits it pretty straight off the tee. He's not real long for one of our younger kids. Has a great short game. He's in the field. Uh, so I look for Simon to play, to play pretty well. So those are kind of my amateurs to watch for the event. Okay, so so let me ask you this. That being said, you brought up kind of an interesting point, which is we're, we're playing on a golf course that's a little bit different than most what I would call Sun Country golf courses. The last few years, this event was at a golf course that sort of favored the bomber, I would I, I would like to say. And, and, and we've seen like at events like the Challenge Cup where we see pros and amps head to head that different types of courses suit different types of players, whether they be pros and amps. The last two years at the at the Players' Championship, we've seen an amateur rise to the top. Is that because of the golf course, and do pros stand more of a chance this week than they normally would? You know, it's funny that you ask that, because before I even get a chance to give you my pro picks, but right. uh, I actually think this is, will be the year that the pros take uh, this particular trophy back with them, um, because the golf course does require so much patience and just kind of plotting, not, not necessarily bombing, um, that you just got to make the birdies the old-fashioned way. You have to hit it in the middle of fairways and play smart shots, uh, there's lots of places to get tripped up. One tee ball that's you know 10, 15 yards off line at led of the last couple of years is fine. You can still reach the green. One tee ball that's 10, 15 yards off line at the end of the Mount of Gods could be double or triple bogey. Right. So I mean, some of the pros that I have to watch. I mean, we've got our stalwarts. You know, the Scott Lieberworths, Dan Kesters, Bill Harvey's, Trent Romans. But I look at guys like Carlton Blewett, 
And I look at guys like uh, Daniel Nunez, who's right. our host professional for the right. event. Guys hit very straight, um, right down the middle, know the golf course very well, played it lots of times to do very well at this particular championship. So you've played in a competitively at a course like this before, and specifically at this course. When you go to the end of the Mountain God specifically, is there a certain, is there some, is there a different way that you think around the golf course than you normally would? You know, for me, it's it's about survival on the first uh, few holes. You know, one's a, a, is a pretty generous par five, a uh, chance to get off the um, off the tee and make a, a good number. Um, but depending on where we're going to be starting, since we're starting in shotgun, you might start off on a hole like 12, a par 3 that's right over top of water, extremely difficult. But uh, to me, the key of scoring the golf course is kind of that stretch 9, 10, and 11. You know, three shortish holes, a, a reachable par 5 and 9, 10, a hole for the longer hitters they can actually knock it on, and 11, one of the shorter par 5s in the golf course. So no matter where you start, you know that that's where you have to score once you get to that, to that area of the golf course. So, um, you know, there's lots of holes where it's about positioning off the tee. Um, so I think it's just patience, pick and choose your battles, um, and, and just try to make some birdies when the opportunities present themselves. So, so knowing that from now kind of putting on the other hat and going to the administration side of things, does that make you think differently about course setup? So, you know, normally there's a lot of courses we go at and we're just kind of thinking tips and just making sure maybe every part three isn't the same. But for the most part, we're playing tips somewhere and we're just bombing it. Do, are we going to, as a staff, set up the course any differently than we normally would? I, I don't think there'll be much difference than, than what we traditionally see. I, I think we'll use a lot of the back tees. Um, but you'll see a little bit of variance. I think we'll play with the part threes a little bit. Uh, just to give a little different flavor, and uh, you never know what course conditions could be. And I mean, that, that brings up a good point. Bring your rain gear day right. one, because right. uh, there are afternoon thunderstorms scheduled for uh, every day from, right. for about the next week or so up in Rio, so a chance of those. So bring your rain gear. Uh, hopefully we get everything in. Uh, we don't want to shorten the event to an 18-hole championship, but if you know if that's what it presents itself, right. we will finish the event on Monday. There will be no carryover into Tuesday. We'll finish it on Monday. Uh, but in terms of setup, I think it's going to be pretty typical of what you traditionally see from us. A mixture of easy, some medium, difficult, uh, medium difficulty hole locations, and some that are going to be pretty challenging. Great. So that being said, we'll talk about some of the nuts and bolts of the actual tournament itself for amateurs. It's a chance to come test yourselves against the golf pros in the section. Also a great chance it's, it's one of the, uh, you can get a lot of gift certificate money uh, there. This is one of the better payouts too, which kind of segues into the pro side of things. One of our best payouts of the year for the, for the pros. Uh, there's a lot of side games too. If for some reason you're one of those pros that doesn't necessarily want to donate, we hear the word donate quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of things for you as well. Uh, not only just sort of off the golf course because the end of the Mountain Gods is so great, but also we're going to have some side games where skins are taken care of. This is the one event of the year where our purse is good enough to where we try to buck up. And, and we're also taking the money uh, that was left over from the Pro Pro, the second day of the Pro Pro where the skins weren't won, and we're putting it back into this purse to take care of skins for you uh, in this specific event. There'll be a blind draw. There'll be a par three contest that carries over bo both days and those kind of traditional games that... Uh, we normally uh, do at most events to give everybody a chance to take home a little bit of money and, and recoup their entry fees. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Matt who can uh, kind of run through our sponsors and a special announcement here at the end and, uh, and I hope to see you guys out there. Uh, the, the big thing we've got is, uh, that we need to do today is really thank our, our two premier sponsors for the championship and that's the In the Mountain Gods Resort Casino. Um, they've been terrific partners with us this year. Uh, we'll have an announcement on Monday night, hopefully after uh, the first round of play. We get all the players together talking about the IMG Cup Series, which you've heard a lot of about this year, um, but may not know the full details. We're going to try to address it since we have most of the best players there uh, on Monday. And then uh, our other sponsor, which is uh, kind of a conglomerate, is TMAG, TaylorMade, Adidas, and Ashworth. Uh, great sponsors for us. Helps out with lots of different championships. Uh, really appreciate them being on board. They've been on board for the last few years and uh, really appreciate that. The Ambers will get a chance to enjoy uh, some T-Mag stuff uh, with their tea gift this week. And as always for the PGA section, uh, the PGA Tour is one of our premier sponsors as well. Um, but the big thing that we want to kind of address is we're going to be giving that some information for the section professionals on the IMG Cup Series and what that finale is going to look like uh, later on this year. Uh, we've got a site kind of nailed down and some dates for you. Uh, and want to make sure everyone understands at this championship what they're getting into if they qualify for that particular champion, uh, 